Hey everybody, welcome back to the class. When we left off, I had asked you to modify this query, which had source medium, landing page, and, and some user and session statistics. And I wanted you to add number of transactions. And one thing we could do here is we could just think of this as like, uh, we almost have everything, right? Like this is close. We have our source medium, we have our landing page, we have these metrics already, we just need transactions. Now, event name session start is the big problem. So one thing we could do, let's, let's leave that alone because we have it working. Let's, let's copy it down and let's just, let, let's leave both of these alone, like source medium and landing page. Let's get rid of uh, unique users for now. Let's leave the count, but let's change the event name. So the event name is purchase. The purchase event describes information about an e-commerce transaction. That's the standard implementation that most companies use, if I'm not mistaken. So these two columns stay the same. We're going to count. I'm going to call that number transactions. And let's run it just to see how that goes. Okay, great. We got source medium. We've got landing page, number of transactions, okay? So how could we how could we bring this all together? We've got two tables, right? Effectively, not literal tables, but like theoretically, like this is a this is a table that gets us some pretty good pretty good results and, and we want to combine it with this table which gets us purchases. Notice that the key, the common keys are gonna be source medium and landing page. These are the common keys. So let me, let me just call this, uh, I'll call that with uh, traffic data as, and I'll get rid of my limit here, of course. So I'll move that up into my common table expression called traffic data, bada bing, bada boom. And then I'll say with uh, transaction data as, and I'll bring my transaction query. Let me get rid of the limit. We'll move that up into this common table expression. Let me zoom out a little bit. Wanna make sure the, the font is big enough. So we have our traffic data, we have our transaction data. And now what we wanna do is I say, I'll, I'll select um, from traffic data which is again up, up here on row seven. And I'll call that T. So I want everything from traffic data. Let's just run that, make sure you know what's going on. It's, it's the same thing we had above, just the landing page and the source medium. One thing I wanna do is I, I wanna go ahead and join it to transaction data and I'll call that uh, maybe TD. And how are we going to join that? I'm going to join it on uh, t dot source medium is equal to td dot source medium and t dot uh, landing page is equal to td dot landing page. Okay, now notice originally here in my results I have 385 rows. Now, when I do this join, and don't forget, when you just use the word join, it's an inner join. Just revisiting some fundamentals here. Let's take a look at what happens. Okay, well, uh, you know, I've got I've got fewer rows now. I've only got three rows, and I, I don't have anything from TD yet, right? I, I haven't um, really. I want a number of transactions from TD, right? So I need to make sure I add that after I join over to my data. Okay, now we have number of transactions, but but the problem remains that where the heck did my 385 rows go? If if you're like Jeff, come on, this is this is so pedestrian. That's great. Just remember that the inner join collapses the data to rows that are common between the tables. Most rows from traffic are likely not going to have a transaction. Most e-commerce conversion rates are, you know, 
lower than that sometimes. You know, in, in different niches, you might have higher conversion rates, 5 to 7% sometimes, but generally they're pretty low. So what we want to do is, is make sure we do a left join between uh, traffic data and transaction data. And then we'll see that we have our 385 rows again here. There you can see 385 rows. And most of the time, number of transactions will be null. And that's fine. So great. So now we've got source, medium, landing page, unique users, unique session, uh, number of sessions, transactions. Now, what would be an interesting next step? What if we wanted to start thinking about some kind of a attribution model? So what if we just wanted to build a last click attribution model? How would you do that? And I'd say using source medium, that's great. And, and just a reminder, what is a last click attribution model? It's, uh, it assigns revenue to the last channel that a user interacted with. I'm not talking about last non-direct click. That's a little bit trickier. Just last click. Now, the, if you remember the standard Google Analytics implementation, the, the traffic sources report, if you go under e-commerce, that is going to be last non-direct click. It's a little trickier. So what we want to figure out how to do is, is how would we build a last click attribution model? So a couple of things to unpack here, you know, do we have revenue implemented? If not, we can use transactions. I'm not a complete expert with this data set. I have no idea what they have or have not implemented. Then we'll have to say, well, okay, what, what session is that particular transaction from? We sort of have that here, right? And how do we know it's the last one? Well, think about that. Think about that. So that's your challenge. Try to go from this to building some kind of a report summarizing last click transactions by uh, source medium. You can get rid of landing page. And I would say as another challenge, think about, you know, can you do first click? First click attribution? What would the difference be? All right, great. Give that some thought. Maybe chat about it with AI. At least try one query. And in the next video, we'll come back and solve the problem. Thanks, y'all.